as you can see on this one it's uh, pretty normal I don't expect anything but that is seafood just thought I should probably start justifying the expense of this um, Geiger counter I bought last year by starting to uh, collect a few samples from around the place you may remember the video I did a few years ago about dangerous things around the house this is not a prank this is not a joke there's no wires or anything anywhere. That's the clock from the Liberator Bomber. Just my new Geiger counter. Holy oh, shit. You're joking. This thing's definitely not staying in my office anymore. And this is the latest Sox Prime Geiger counter. So it's still climbing. So it went up to about 50. A dosimeter, or Geiger counter, shows how much radiation is present per hour. There are many different numbers used, typically depending on the meter itself. Okay, so um, we're outside here, and we have very nice normal background radiation. Well, this has been calibrated now. This is quite a low normal background amount of radiation. There are many different measurements of radiation. And also in the description area, I'll list those different measurements. So, I've just bought myself some lunch, which is one of the things I like to eat, uh, being sushi. And of course, uh, what I like is the... Uh, usually get fresh salmon and avocado and um, tuna and avocado so let's uh, tilt down a little bit and um, see what the meter comes up with I don't expect anything but that is seafood getting nothing here at the moment which is a good thing. Let's lay it right on top. No, so that's all good. Of course I don't know the source of this um, particular seafood. So that's pretty reassuring. Um, I mean this was only a $300 Geiger counter or dosimeter. And they're certainly not going to pay five or ten grand for something that's far more accurate, but it should, in theory, give me a, an idea. And of course, I doubt the uh, the ginger has any. So so far so good. I'm obviously in Australia, but uh, yeah, just normal background radiation. Okay, on to our next test. And now time for another experiment. I'm sure we've all heard the rumour that bananas are radioactive. Well, <laughs> uh, whilst it may be true that on a much more expensive dosimeter they may show up, as you can see on this one, it's uh, pretty normal. Let's peel one and see how we go. Oh, don't feel very hungry, so I'll just get a normal one, but uh, I'll give them a bit of a peel and see how that shows up. You can see it's uh, we're good to go, and hmm, seems to be healthier to be around bananas. <laughs> there you go. Uh, look. If anything, maybe you'd have to be in a whole banana factory on top of a pile to pick up anything, but as you can see, uh, there's no change from normal background radiation variants here. But, 
waste not, want not. Hmm. And now let's see if smoke detectors really are radioactive. Behind these slits at the back of the Geiger counter is a sealed chamber typically containing argon or xenon gas which contains two electrodes. In the description area below I'll put a description of how it all works as well as a conversion link. Very slightly so far. Not highly. Right over the detector there. There we go. I may speed this up slightly because it does take a while for the meter to show. It's very small. Let's see what it goes to. Okay, that's alarm mode. If these are the old type of detectors, which have now been replaced, and they weren't replaced because of radiation, but the new type of detectors apparently are a lot more accurate. Three times what it should be. But then again, it's right over the detector, so. Well, it's about the highest. This is right on top of the detector. As you'd expect it to be pretty high. Substantially high. It's about seven times the normal background level of radiation. Nothing too critical. So about 0 0.77, 0 0.78, 0 0.8. I'm not sure of the half-life of these either. But anyway, there we have it. Yes, radioactive, but not obscenely. Actually, it was a radiologist that years ago told me that airline pilots, because of the flying in the cockpit, uh, receive approximately 20 minutes worth of being on a tanning bed of UVA radiation for every hour they fly. Although I guess since the pandemic they're receiving less radiation. So naturally it climbs up again. To about 0.28 millisieverts. Or is it microsieverts? Millisieverts, I think. Microsieverts. I don't know. I get confused. Yep. There we have it. And of course, once the lids are down, It's even more safe because of only sensors through the grills. These are about to go into the bin. From a few feet away, quite safe. Quite safe.
Okay, reset inside the house. Let's see what the new detector does. That's about as hell as I can reach, <laughs> by the way. Very mildly, oh, pretty well the same. Hmm. I don't think the new ones are an ionising detector. But anyway, certainly harmless from arm's length. And there's the new type up there. Pretty normal. Radiation is higher inside the house though. Okay, time for another experiment. Who can think why I'd have gloves on to handle a bit of foil? Well, <coughs> if you look back on my video of my Liberator clock, which not everyone would have at home, of course. You'll remember how radioactive it was because of the radium dial. So, even though I handled this many, many, many times as a boy when my mate gave me the clock, now that I'm aware that it is radioactive, let's just open it because I've had it in the cupboard ever since that video. And uh, see, once I take the foil away that I protected it in, how the meter jumps up and I'll put it about a, a foot away hopefully you can see that I may speed this up slightly because it does take a while for the meter to show we'll move it a little bit closer actually hope you can see that okay so it's gone into alarm. What's the preset level? I put it 30. And you can see it's climbing slowly. Now that's just a little over 6 inches or around 15 centimeters away from the clock. Now I used to play with this clock uh, with my bare hands. I used to clean it all the time and touch the dial. And it used to be about two feet away from my head in my office for nearly 20 years which probably accounts for a few things <laughs> strange about me but now if I unscrew the glass which is in itself acting as a slide barrier we'll see how that jumps up now I never used to wear gloves but even though it's not highly radioactive it is still alpha particles and probably best not to risk them too much so now with the glass off, see if that jumps up. Uh, try and prop it up a little bit for you, if I can, which I can't. <laughs> prop it up a bit there for the focus. And since the last video, I've also just changed it so the decimal points moved, but we're now at 3.8 microsieverts. So you can see even the, the glass itself, which is only a few millimeters thick, makes a difference as well. I'll just wait to see how high that goes. So around 730. Now I'll show you something interesting. Even two pieces of paper, we'll try one piece of paper, between the clock should start to block those alpha particles.
I'll just try two sheets of paper. <laughs> Paper's not all that thin. Thick. Again, I'll speed this up a bit because it does take a while to adjust. Well, that's not even speeding it up and you can see it's slowly falling with just two sheets of paper. So rather than have you wait too long, let's swap that paper out for a piece of foil, which is what we used to have there. Aluminium foil or to Americans aluminum foil, because there's it's actually very rare to get tin foil these days. So put that in front, try and hold it down with something. Another benefit of working on your own. And see how that falls. Apologies for focus issues. Okay, you can see it's falling, but let's add another level of protection again and put the glass back on as well. That's what it looks like inside a Liberator Bomber clock face, by the way. I would do this barehanded, I'm not worried about it, but like I say, once you know there's a, a mild risk of anything, then you start taking precautions, don't you? Especially in this day and age. So now we have the glass on as well, put it back approximately where it was, and throw some foil over it. And let's see what that does. So we're back in the green, uh, but the unit is still pretty close, so let's move that back here again, to around about one foot or so, and you'll see that will drop down again. But is it the foil itself that's radioactive? Well, let's get the clock totally out of the equation and see. That's the side that was always exposed to it, so let's put it right up there. Of course, the wind will blow it, like so. So with the clock well out of the way, let's see, we've got normal background radiation. This always fluctuates to a little bit. Let's see first if we get a brand new sheet of aluminium foil, just torn off, or aluminium foil, depending which country you are, and uh, put that in front of the dosimeter. Let's see if that changes at all. This can be our control, as Mythbusters would call it. Pretty well staying the same. Now I've tried not to touch that foil with the, the gloves that I still have on, but it is always a good reminder to always dispose of things if you've touched anything radioactive. Of course we're talking tiny tiny doses at this stage but it's a good demonstration. So no changes really from background radiation with the brand new foil. Let's try that piece again with the foil that I removed from the clock and the clock is uh, three feet away from where it's facing. 
So out with the new. And here's the foil I just took off the clock. So you can see I had it labelled there, February the clock. Well, let's just drape that over there and see if there's any residual radiation in the foil, which I wasn't expecting there would be, but I'm not too sure. Getting a couple of pings. You be the judge. Comment below if you have any further knowledge about this. It seems to be hovering about where it was. Let's just flick it around quickly. Um, pretty sure that was the side I had around the clock, but this is the other side I had. It was only wrapped around once. This is the reason. Now we're talking about alpha radiation here with radium. It doesn't penetrate very deeply into the skin, nor very deeply through objects, which was the point of this exercise. But when you talk about the other extreme of ga gamma radiation, and there's many different levels of radiation, for want of a better word, I'll put a list in the description area below. You can see that's sort of rising a little bit over background, so yeah, maybe it did absorb some radiation. Tiny, tiny bit, but still. Um, yeah, when we're talking about the other extreme, like at nuclear power stations with gamma radiation, the shielding you need for that is typically uh, either a foot or two of lead or about seven feet of concrete or so many feet of steel. So, yes, much, much, much more serious to be anywhere near gamma radiation. X-ray radiation is pretty bad as well. I mean, we've all had chest X-rays or things like that. The amount of exposure to it is what is really critical. The amount of absorbed radiation or accumulated radiation. So when you have a chest X-ray, for example, it's like a fraction of a second. Even so, the health authorities are supposed to monitor how many x-rays you might have per year. But you're pretty safe if you only have one or two. Well, I don't know. I'm going to call it at that. It's pretty well the same. I did not expect any residual radiation, but it seems to fluctuate slightly. So this one is in the do not know basket. I mean, it's pretty well where it was before, isn't it? Yeah, it seems pretty normal. I will safely reuse that foil as I wrap the clock up again. As I say, I keep it in a cupboard these days, you know, well away from where anyone sits. Uh, certainly as a collector's item, the Liberator clock is brilliant. I'll just show it to you since it's out in the raw here. Oh. And what happens as soon as I put it there, even next to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's not even facing the, uh, the losers of it, but... Anyway. Yeah, I used to shine it up. I had uh, all the ends, the brass knobs I used to shine up. Surprising there's even any radium here. I mean, we're talking about a World War II liberate a bomber aircraft I used to keep it clean but I'm certainly not throwing it away and this would be the same of any fascias painted with radium back in the, the, the day of World War II etc yeah so that's it it's going back in the foil and uh, well since since I've torn some foil out might as well use a second layer of foil as well, it can't hurt. Well, it's not one, not. So there we are. Two layers of foil. And that should be quite safe again, momentarily. 
it's it's never going to be the same as background radiation if I was to keep that there but a few feet away as you saw in my original video if you haven't seen it check it out and I'll reframe the shot <laughs> it will be safe enough that was a really long experiment so I do thank you if you've waited this long to see let's just hang on let's just take that clock right away from the equation and you'll see it drop back down to normal background right away whoops not far away that I fall over but still whoosh sugar <laughs> right as usual with a Steve Mac video there's always some noise I tried to dodge around the the people mowing but now the pool pumps come on And you'll see now that the clock's been taken out of the equation, it will fall back down to normal background radiation. Right, time to throw away the gloves and put the clock back in the cupboard. So, if you have any suggestions as to what to measure that might be around your house that you'd like me to follow up on, leave a comment below and, um, and I'll see what I can do for you for a future video. Mm. Alright, um, cheers. See you soon.